So, tension. When does tension exist? Well, there are a lot of examples in nature where tension exists. It's rubber band, tension. These support chains involve the tension force. Now, as you saw in the video, when don't we have tension? Well, just because we have these objects, it doesn't mean they're always in tension. If, as you can see, they're not pulled tight and they're just loose, as in these situations, then the cable or the rubber band or the wire would not have any tension. In this situation, mentioned previously, there is no tension. However, at this point, there is tension, and specifically the tension points along the direction that the cable is in. In this situation, a spider web also has a tension force, and again, the tension force points along the direction of the web in this case. So let's look at our first example. A superhero climbs up a web. If the maximum tension the web can support is 1,500 newtons, what is the maximum acceleration the superhero can move along the web if his mass is 80 kilograms? So let's draw a diagram and we have our superhero here climbing a web. And there's the force of gravity acting downwards. To get the force of gravity, we use the formula Fg equals mg, where m is the mass, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. And so the force of gravity is 784 newtons. However, there's also a tension force. And it's this tension force that will allow him to climb up the web. Notice the tension force is significantly greater than gravity. And so, whenever we do these physics type style problems, we always have to determine what direction is positive when dealing with vectors. And so, the positive direction in this situation would be upwards. Because ultimately, the superhero will be traveling upwards. And the positive direction is the direction of movement or acceleration. And so we start off with an F net statement. F net equals 1500, subtract gravity. 1500 is positive because it points upwards. Gravity is negative because it points downwards. Gravity opposes the motion in this situation. What is F net equal to? According to Newton's second law, F net is equal to MA. Substituting 80 for the mass, and now solving for acceleration, we get a value of 8.95 meters per second squared. Using significant digits and noting that there's only one significant digit here, our final answer would be 9 meters per second squared. What does this actually mean? Well, if the superhero tries to accelerate at a greater acceleration than this value, then the web would snap. So, beyond this acceleration, the spider web would snap. Now, what if the superhero was not accelerating, but was just hanging there, just stationary? What would the tension force be acting on the web? Please pause video now. All right, I hope you gave this some thought. Well, if the acceleration is zero, the forces are now balanced. And that's the case. Whenever acceleration is zero, the forces are always balanced. And so in this situation, the tension is 784 newtons. It would be identical to the force of gravity. And notice in the diagram that these two arrows are the exact same length. It's important when you draw force diagrams that you represent the scale. And if this is, for example, two centimeters long, then this line should also be two centimeters long. 
to show that the two vectors are equal. Finally, why is there no normal force in this situation? I'd like you to give it some thought. Please pause the video now. Well, it's because the character is not in contact with the ground. To have a normal force, the character or a person has to be in contact with the ground. In this situation, the character is hanging on a web. I'd like you to redo this question. However, this time I'd like you to calculate the tension force if the acceleration of the character is only 2 meters per second squared. All right, I hope you tried this. F net equals tension, subtract gravity. MA equals tension, subtract 784, the force of gravity. Substituting. This time we know our acceleration and we're trying to solve for tension. And rearranging, we get 944 newtons. Or, with significant digits, only 900 newtons. Now does this make sense? It does. Notice that for a low acceleration, a small acceleration, the force is smaller. And in general that's the case. As the acceleration of the object increases, the force increases. Clearly, if the acceleration decreases, then the force would decrease as well. Greater force means greater acceleration. All right, here's example two. A grocery bag is lifted out of the trunk of a car with an acceleration of three meters per second squared. The bag, with its contents, has a mass of five kilograms. Will the bag break if the maximum tension force the handles of the bag can withstand is 80 newtons? So once again, you're trying to figure out tension. If it's bigger than 80 newtons, then unfortunately the bag will break. And I know that's happened to me many times over the years. But if it's less than 80 newtons, then the bag will not break. So I'd like you to pause the video now and give this a shot. All right, here's our diagram, there's our bag. Notice the tension force is drawn longer than the force of gravity. Force of gravity is determined with this equation, 5 times 9.8, mass times acceleration due to gravity. We're going to define our positive direction as up because we're lifting up on this bag. Negative direction then is opposite that or down. And here we go. F net equals FT. Tension force is positive because it points up. Subtract gravity. Gravity is negative because it points down. What is F net always equal to? It's MA. And continuing on, 3 times 5 is equal to tension, subtract gravity. Y3. Well, because the acceleration is 3, y5, because the mass is 5. And rearranging the equation, we get 64 newtons as our tension force. Or, in significant digits, just 60. Why 60? Because we have one sig fig here. And so we can conclude that the bag would not break in this situation.